Hi everyone, welcome back to Aim at Melanoma's series, Melanoma 101. I'm Melissa Wilson, physician assistant and also ask an expert for Aim at Melanoma. Um, today we're gonna talk about sunscreen. So I'd like to think of this as a sunscreen refresher. Um, what we really are aiming to do is give you a little bit of information about the different types of sunscreen, some pros and cons of each one. Everyone always asks me what the best sunscreen is and truly I'm here to tell you that the best sunscreen is the one that you wear and wear properly. So today what we're going to do is just talk about the, the different types. If you have specific questions about sunscreens that I recommend or ones that I use, I'm happy to answer those questions um, through the Ask an Expert line on Aim at Melanoma's website. So just to get started, um, there are two generally accepted types of sunscreen. There are chemical sunscreens and there are physical sunscreens. We're gonna talk about both of them. Um, essentially, the thing that makes them different is how they work, um, a little bit about their formulations. Um, so we'll just jump right in and talk about it. So, oh, the first thing that I do wanna mention is that the things that we're trying to actually block are UVA and UVB. So when the sun emits their rays, there's actually a lot of different types of UV radiation that come down from the sun. But the two that seem to be the most needed in terms of blockade because the other wavelengths are not really very harmful are UVA and UVB. Um, the way that I like to remember which one does what is that UVA is mainly the aging type of, of UV sunlight and UVB um, is the type of sun that burns us. So that obviously from our melanoma standpoint, not a, we do want to worry about aging, but we also want to worry about getting burned. So chemical sunscreens. Chemical sunscreens are very, very widely available. Um, a lot of times telling the difference between chemical and um, physical sunscreen is that you have to read the labels. So chemical sunscreens in general work by absorbing um, the UV um, light in the skin um, and into the um, sunscreen itself. So one thing to keep in mind is that chemical sunscreens are absorbed into the first layer, the epidermis of your skin. And if you don't know what epidermis and dermis are, you can go back and watch um, our earlier videos about how the UV sun exposure affects our skin. <clears throat> anyway, so you can see from my beautiful graphic here um, that the sun emits their UV light, that's the red line, um, and then what happens is, is it's absorbed into the sunscreen, which is in the epidermis, and sort of scatters it around, um, and then it's admit admitted as a chemical process like heat. So it doesn't penetrate the dermis, which is important, um, most of the epidermis is made up of keratin and other things that really aren't, I hate to say not alive, but they're not as alive as the deeper layers of the skin. So what happens is the sunscreen absorbs the UV light and then it kind of undergoes a chemical process and then emits it through heat in the skin. So effective, it's still helping to block most UVA and UVB. Um, radiation, um, especially when it is applied appropriately, which stay tuned for that video next. Um, one very important thing to keep in mind with chemical sunscreens is that since they are absorbed into the skin, they do need a little bit of time to work. So this is where the recommendation that you apply sunscreens about 30 minutes before you go out into the sun comes from. So you have to leave these a little bit of time um, to get settled in the skin before they are affected. 100% effective. Um, one of the nice things about chemical sunscreens is that they are, generally speaking, very thin and easy to apply. Um, so, um, you know, when you rub them in, you don't generally have to work too hard to rub them into the skin. Um, they typically do not leave a white residue unless they do contain some of the physical um, sunscreen components in them. Um, so for the most part, these are very clothing friendly. They go on very easily. Um, and typically, are, are even though they might be colored white when they go on the skin, they tend to dry clear. Um, some of the active ingredients, and this is where you'll be able to tell if it's a chemical sunscreen, is that they will contain ingredients like avobenzone, um, octinate, octinate um, and ov a uh, oxybenzone. See, they're hard for me to say too. Um, so avobenzone, octinate, and oxybenzone. Sometimes you can also see um, a complex called helioplex. Sometimes that is 
um, advertised on the label. Um, so those are the ingredients that you would want to look for to know that it's a chemical sunscreen. Okay, pretty simple. Now, physical sunscreens are a little bit different. Um, as you can see from this graphic, um, when the sun shines, the UV light goes through the red you know, line here. Um, and it actually, the sunscreen sits on the top of the skin. So it doesn't absorb into the epidermis. It just very, it makes a light layer on top of the skin. Um, and so what happens is the UV light is actually blocked or reflected off. Now there, there is a little bit that is absorbed into the skin. So it's not completely foolproof. The UV, you know, um, radiation and the sunscreen does absorb a little tiny bit into the top layer of the skin. So, um, generally speaking, it's blocking. So it's reflecting. So what you see is the UV light comes in and it's reflected back out. That's what a physical sunscreen does. It's almost the equivalent of wearing like an armor of sunscreen on your skin. Okay. Um, it does block, not reflect or absorb, but it does block both UVA and UVB. So that's a difference between the two types of sunscreen. Um, generally speaking, because this does just sit on the top of the skin and doesn't absorb, it is generally well tolerated by folks that have sensitive skin. But I will say that some folks will also have a little bit of a skin reaction sometimes to the zinc or the titanium. More so I've seen zinc just because it does cause a little bit of dryness um, on the skin. Um, so just watch out for that. It is generally well tolerated, but there are some people that will get a little bit of a skin irritation from that. Um, it is more immediately effective as well because it doesn't absorb down into the skin or it's not required to absorb into the skin for it to work. Um, I still recommend that you put your sunscreen on a little bit before you go out in the sun um, just so it dries and it's not rubbed off by anything you're carrying or clothing you might be wearing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it does tend to be a little bit thicker, so you have to work a little harder at getting this applied. Um, and you will notice um, with physical sunscreens that they also sometimes will leave a little bit of a whitish red residue on the skin. Now, with the newer formulations that are made, um, that zinc and titanium um, are micronized, which means that they're ground down really fine. So a lot of times you'll have less of that than you would have maybe 10 or 15 years ago with physical sunscreens, but it does sometimes cause a little bit of a white residue. Um, so just in that in mind, the active ingredients that you're looking for when you're reading labels are titanium dioxide um, and zinc oxide. Now, obviously there may be other chemicals contained within the sunscreen, but those are the ones that kind of delineate it as a physical sun block. So um, no right or wrong answer. Both chemical and physical sunscreens are extremely effective. Um, they do need to be reapplied, and actually there will be a video that you can watch um, about sunscreen application. We're gonna um, definitely check that one out. Um, so we'll talk about all those tips for sunscreen application in our next video, but I just wanna make sure that we know that even though there may be a lot of controversy surrounding different chemicals and other, you know, environmental concerns. At the end of the day, the best sunscreen is the one that you wear. I hope that you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.